Hi everyone, we're back. We're Emma Black and Bill Swan. We're the parents of seven children, currently ages 42 to 18, mm -hmm. so they're not really children, but and <laughs> grandparents to 11 terrific grandchildren. We're also a godless grandpa and a Christian Mima. Mm -hmm. So when we were asked what we thought about homeschooling, we realized that a thoughtful discussion would take a big chunk of time from our episodes on kids' issues. So we're doing what we hope will be a quick video in between. <laughs> quick, yeah. <laughs> this topic was brought up by our subscriber, Red Pill Samurai. Hi. Hi. It seems a lot of us non-believers are concerned because we see so many homeschooling families who only choose this option because they're fundamentalists or fringe religions like young earth creationists who want to prevent their children from being exposed to science and culture that doesn't jibe with their beliefs. Of course, that is going on. I'm not arguing. It, it, it is in some areas it seems to be even the prevalent rationale for homeschooling. Well, and it's their right. Yeah. Well, we reached out to the creators of the channel What the Craft. They are a mixed faith couple similar to us and are beginning homeschooling young children in a different state. They told us that where they live, it's very difficult to find homeschool curricula that are not overtly Christian and Bible based. It's not because it's a Bible focused curriculum. I spent six months trying to find a non-Christian <laughs> curriculum. I spent about six months looking at different curriculums and going, well, we can edit this, edit this, edit this. That's Wait, there's no that. curriculum left. Let's look at the next <laughs> one. Go wild. And now, even now, we can't really join a homeschool group because they are all so strictly Christian and that's what it's all about so we understand the reason there is concern about the issue mm -hmm. however it's fair to point out this is hardly the only reason that parents might choose homeschooling many families consider homeschooling for a variety of valid reasons that have nothing to do with religion true now do we believe that teaching your children at home can be a really good idea for some families the short answer is yes why because there are almost as many reasons to want to homeschool a child as there are families willing to attempt it. <laughs> Here's a quote from Wikipedia. Parents commonly cite two main motivations for homeschooling their children. Dissatisfaction with the local schools and the interest in increased involvement with their children's learning and development. Yeah. They cite concerns about the school environment, the quality of academic instruction, that curriculum, bullying, racism, and lack of the school's abilities to support any special needs. Mm -hmm. And they also recognize that some parents homeschool in order to provide instruction from a specific religious or moral position. But no, people don't homeschool their kids just because they're lazy. Wait, who said that? <laughs> the husband of one of my patients oh. made that comment. And I could tell that I, he, he could see I did not agree with him. He's a stubborn, hard-headed old man. <laughs> So he challenged me to explain, and I said that I had homeschooled some of my kids, and it would have been far easier to just get up and put them on the bus. You see, he didn't realize that homeschooling kids, at least doing it right, is much harder than spending a few hours on homework, yeah. especially if you choose to homeschool all your kids at the same time. Oh, yeah. oh my hats are off to the parents who can do that successfully. <laughs> For us, reasons for homeschooling varied. Out of our seven kids, only two of our boys had traditional schooling all the way through. One's a doctor now, and the other is a business administrator. But for the other five, homeschooling was useful. Our special needs son started formal schooling at age three and finally graduated from a school for the deaf when he was 21. Mm -hmm. He's Mr. Independent now, the one who moved the farthest away from us. He just recently got married and went back to college part-time. Well, we didn't really homeschool him. We just had a lot of work to do with oh, yeah. you know, yeah. helping him. Our youngest son missed out on kindergarten because his birthday was after the state deadline. And then we moved that summer, so the next year he had to begin first grade, even though we wanted to register him for kindergarten. Mm. But they tested him and said he's too advanced for kindergarten, so he wasn't allowed to go where we felt he needed to be. Yeah. In the testing, they put a block on a table, then they set a toy truck on it. And they asked, where's the truck? Mm -hmm. And he said, on the block. Okay. Then they 
put it behind the block and ask, where's the truck? And he said, it's behind the block. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they put the block on the truck and said, where's the truck? And he said, on the table. Ah, <laughs> that wasn't the right answer, but it was 100% correct. Yeah. We knew right then a regular school was going to be a challenge for this creative son. Well, he is a tattoo artist now. Yeah, very creative. Uh, who can predict the future? <laughs> it's what he loves, and he's really good at it. Hi, son. Hi, honey. <laughs> he was homeschooled for just the last semester of sixth grade, partly because we were moving again, and I didn't want him to be behind the class and start feeling inadequate. He didn't need to be the new kid one more time, so we just worked together for five months. I had to create his lessons on my own, since this was just a little bit before all those all the online and charter schools burst onto the scene. Yeah, right. Homeschooling at that time was handled largely by mail. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, many homes didn't have a computer or, or the internet. Nope. Desktops and connections were expensive and it was, it was all new. The technological revolution was just getting going. All right. I didn't know how important it was going to be. <laughs> Nowadays, schools and businesses expect that every family has at least one email and a computer. And if you don't, they look at you like you're a dinosaur. Or a caveman. Right. How can anyone live in the modern world without a laptop? I don't know. You remember that line from Back to the Future? Oh, yeah. Do you have a television? Oh, yeah. You know, we have two of them. Wow. You must be rich. Oh, honey, he's teasing you. Nobody has two televisions, Dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Things considered old-fashioned in our childhood became ancient history faster and faster each generation. And back to our other kids. Our oldest daughter had problems staying focused, but she wasn't a wiggle worm. She was really smart, but not doing well in school. Today, she would have probably been diagnosed with ADD. Yes. But back then, if they weren't hyperactive, they were just considered lazy or slow. We didn't know how to help her focus and stop daydreaming, and the school staff was zero help. No. Because she didn't fit into their mold. We tried a private school for a year without any better success, in spite of the cost and the smaller yeah. classes. Finally, we decided to homeschool her so she would get her education in bite-sized pieces without losing her concentration. Yep. That wasn't easy. Oh, we had to make up our own curriculum and spend hours a day in the library. Then she went to a public high school later and the problem started again. Right. She eventually got her GED and went to cosmetology school. Happy now. We know so much more about how the ADD and ADHD brains are wired now and how to help these kids. School staffs understand this condition now, but they didn't know Jack back in 1987. Ooh. Ooh. Our middle daughter was tested in fifth grade and found to be gifted in English. Her skills were 11th grade, but her math was at third grade level. That's not right. Mm. She loved to learn, but no one noticed that her math was falling behind. Online homeschooling was an option then, yeah. praise the Lord, thank goodness, <laughs> because I was working full time. That wasn't an easy decision, but she loved the sample classes they gave us, and it didn't seem like it would be too hard on the parents. <laughs> So, we bit the bullet. Online schools still have to do the state testing. And after two years at home, she was above average on her grade levels, and she wanted to go to the public high school. Mm -hmm. Her freshman English teacher asked her why she wasn't in honors English. <laughs> so, she had to tell her that she'd been homeschooled for the last two years, and their high school didn't really count those grades as good enough for their honors classes. There is a prejudice against homeschooling, perhaps because of the perceptions mentioned earlier. If your mom is your teacher, it's presumed she was easy on you or gave you higher grades than you deserved or just did the work for you. <laughs> that daughter graduated with honors. She's happily married and going to college to become a teacher. Yep. <laughs> Our youngest daughter was harassed in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. She was targeted by one boy who teased her horribly. Three school principals did nothing since the bully just denied everything she reported to them. Mm -hmm. He was believed, but she wasn't. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. She actually started running fevers for no reason. Mm -hmm. Our little blue-eyed blonde would get cherry red sent to the nurse who was required to send her home until she was fever-free for 24 hours. So she was out at least two days each time it happened. Then the school district threatens us for not keeping her in school. That's the hell about Even with a pediatrician's note saying she had idiopathic fevers and was not contagious, they wouldn't let her stay in class. Eventually, the boy intentionally 
touched her inappropriately, and no more Mrs. Nice Mom. No, I wish I could have been there when this mama bear stomped into the principal's office that day. Well, being forgiving and understanding was hurting my baby. Mm -hmm. They were useless to protect her, so I felt like I had no choice. I withdrew her. We started her in the same online school that we used for her sister, and she really wasn't happy about it. But she liked having mom and dad for teachers for two and a half years. Bill was retired from the Navy by then, so we were settled in our house. She had lots of friends in the neighborhood. Later, she went on to her sister's high school, had a great time, just graduated magna cum laude, with a full scholarship to our state university. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're bragging again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that none of our reasons had anything to do with religious beliefs. We met many other homeschool families, lots and, and they had many other reasons. Absolutely. Some people homeschooled because their kids had long-term illnesses or emotional traumas, and they couldn't deal with the schools judging them or making them jump through hoops when the kids were absent. Some families want their children to be together all the time and learn how to help each other, believing that it's going to keep their family close. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be as common in our area, but some families did choose homeschooling because they disagreed with the curriculum, mm -hmm. especially the science lessons on the age of the earth and evolution, which appear to them to be uh, contradicting the Bible. Well, they do if you're taking the English translations literally. Yeah, I know. You don't want your kids to go out into the world appearing less intelligent than their peers. Especially if they are strong in your religious faith. You definitely don't want them to look dumb. True. Absolutely true. And as a non-believer, I want to just say that no one is stupid just because they have a religion. You may have heard one or more of my crowd saying that people of faith are dumb or stupid. I don't buy that. Many of us non-believers were active believing church members for years before we left. But when we left religion, our IQ didn't go up. And, you know, smart people are better at making elaborate rationalizations. Okay, if you say so, honey. <laughs> <laughs> people of faith and those who lack faith can be super brains or below average intelligence. Mm. Either one can be well-read or illiterate. They can have a PhD or be a high school dropout. Mm -hmm. when, when we're kids, we don't always understand how important our education is. No. We don't realize that children in other nations would give nearly anything for the opportunity to go to school. In some countries, girls are not allowed to go to school. And schooling isn't government funded like it is here. I know. Good schools cost money. And maybe they think it's a waste of time to educate a girl. Like females don't deserve to learn. Or their places to wash, cook, have babies, and please the men. So they don't need to know how to read or and write or do math. Hmm. Well, or maybe the men are just afraid of what the women could do if they had that kind of power. Yeah, I'm on your side here. We're talk you're talking about patriarchal thinking again. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're on the same page there. But having at least a basic education, it's freedom from ignorance, protection from poverty, and protection from exploitation. Exploitation. Every child, every child deserves the opportunity to reach their full potential, even if they don't want to go on to university. And we know how expensive that is, even with a scholarship for tuition. <laughs> yeah. Not having at least the equivalent of a high school education is a major disadvantage for our youth. Most parents do want their kids to have advantages that they didn't have and do better for themselves and their children. And since we're living longer, we need our kids to be making good money so they can take care of us in our old age. <laughs> <laughs> and, and three of our parents never got a high school diploma. And we didn't need some expensive scientific study to tell us that their lives and our childhood might have been a little bit better with a good education. Mm -hmm. You and I were the first in our families to get college degrees. We and our kids are trying to do even better for themselves and their children. Even though every school may not have been excellent, most of them were pretty good. Pretty good. And we recognize that teachers were significant in the, our children's lives. Teachers can have a major effect on kids. Well, they could tell our kids things we don't actually agree with. Well, true. I'm sure it's one of the main reasons why parents of strong faiths are reluctant to give a stranger that much influence over their children, especially when they're still so young and impressionable. Mm -hmm. But maybe the most important thing to teach kids at home is to be aware and curious ready to learn, open-minded, and to be confident and comfortable with who they are, what they stand for. Mm -hmm. I think the parents who prefer to homeschool their kids in order to control their exposure to non-religious views 
should really consider that their kids will one day need to go out into the world where they will be exposed to many others not of their faith. Helping them to cope with thousands of questions later may be harder than helping them to manage a few of the earth science, life science, and philosophy questions that they see as problematic. You can teach your kids the answer to the school's questions while you can tell them that you have another perspective. Mm -hmm. Kids generally trust you. And they'll also learn that some people will disagree and not everyone knows all the answers. <laughs> That's okay. Keeping them from interacting with the world has multiple consequences. There are several ways to teach tolerance and respect, but you know brainwashing begins with isolation. Exactly. How many That's parents okay. want their kids to be just robots and only mimic what they're told? Hmm. We believe it's more important to teach children how to think rather than what to think. But there are a few very vocal people out there who are never encouraged to think for themselves or use reason, logic, and facts. And many of them butt heads with us non-believers every day. <laughs> of course, keeping your children from mingling with others when they already live with both an atheist and theist parent <laughs> probably isn't worth the trouble. No, that wouldn't make much sense. Over the generations, homeschooling went from being the only option for pioneers to an unusual option in the 70s, <laughs> yeah. and then back to one of the many options for parents today. In some areas, the schools are poor quality, or the districts may seem too religious or too secular. So that could be a factor in a parent's decision to homeschool. We have a lot of options today, but as a student, I knew very few kids who went to alternative schools. Mm -hmm. One wealthy family sent their kids to a fancy private school, right. and some went to Catholic school. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice really that much difference in the kids' behavior or their intelligence. No. Any of them could be good or bad, kind or bullies, super smart or dumber than a bag of hammers. The private school kids probably got snooty as they got older, right. but you know, I never knew any kids that got to stay home with their mother all day. Right, not where we were. Mm -hmm. But you know where we live now, it's not unusual to look down our street and see kids who go to the district school, some go to the charter schools nearby, and a few have a variance to stay at their old school. There's also a private school 10 miles away, so their parents drive them. Some special needs students are bused across town, and and there are a few that are homeschooled. Yeah. So the decision to officially homeschool children shouldn't be taken lightly. You know, mm -hmm. it's a ton of work. Oh, yeah. And the parents staying home to teach their kids needs the support from the working parent. And on the other hand, having kids in school during the day may give parents more time to take care of those household issues. Although it seems that these days both parents are often working just to make ends meet. Right. So the decision is yours to make. Absolutely. Um, we'll, but let me just go over a few things to consider if you are wondering if homeschooling is for you, your kids, and your family lifestyle. First, you need to set up a classroom area. Yeah. That takes time. You might need to adjust that as you go along, and it's not free. You'll need supplies that don't always come from the online school. <laughs> you will need to decide on an online school or if you're going to purchase a curriculum or if you're going to design one of your own, assuming your state is okay with that. Right. In that case, the state will normally tell you how to prove that your lessons are adequate. Tell your friends you're considering homeschool. You should have a few choices. People will come over and tell you what they love or they hate about their child's program. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they all have regulations, but their presentations can be very different. And the school may have different ways to meet state requirements. Uh, an online school composes their curriculum through different programs like video libraries and encyclopedia websites and electronic classrooms. Right. You'll need to learn the school rules and how to maneuver around the websites and links, not only for the kids' lessons, but for the mandatory parental chores too. <laughs> Some may yeah. feel more friendly and fun, while others have a more precise and high-tech feel. So you want to sign up for the program that you feel fits best for you and your child. Mm. Depending on the child, your time to supervise varies. You might start at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then have breakfast and, and or then have lunch and review at like 2. Mm -hmm. Or it could be intense with frequent interactions all day long if you're in the need of spoon feeding lessons to a struggling child. It can be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. The time you spend working with your student can be seven times longer when you homeschool than just helping with homework. <laughs> Teaching time doesn't go down when you take over for the school. That's true. Um, there was a thought the other day though that 
sometimes you can get a lot more information in a shorter period of time. Well, especially since you're one-on-one. -on -one. Since you're one-on-one. -on -one. But it's cool when you can do several lessons ahead in one subject or spend more time on anything that catches your child's interest. Mm -hmm. Going to a museum or even watching a movie can become part of your lessons. And you don't have to do what all the other kids are doing at the same time. Mm -hmm. We watched Forrest Gump as a history test review. Mm -hmm. What was true and what was story. Mm -hmm. The best thing is that it's all homework. So once your child's lessons are done for the day, yeah. can usually relax in the evenings, unless there's reading. And we use their literature assignments for bedtime stories. <laughs> We hope we've given you plenty to think about. Homeschooling isn't anything to fear, but we do encourage you to do your homework before you make such a big decision. Very punny. Uh, and involve the kids, of course. The ones that understand what's expected of them and are still excited about it will almost certainly do well. And parents who enjoy learning will too. Mm -hmm. We hope you'll think positively and no matter whichever type of school you believe is your best option mm -hmm. at the time, you will be able to make, make every, every day, day the, the best, best it can, can be. be. <laughs>